Yeah, so go with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We are continuing with our subject. Um, I don't know how did I entitle it, but I know probably it's just like Paul's heart uh, about uh, the welfare of the servants of God. Something like that. I don't know what I said to you. Uh, if, if you keep what I said, I, I don't know what, what was the title as we started. But we're, doing, we're dealing with the same series, okay? Amen? I hope that, I hope that this series that we're doing, um, um, is it this series or, 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 or this series? Okay, whatever it is. Uh, I hope that your mind is opened. I hope that you, you look at things differently because that is the aim. That's what the Bible says, at the entrance, of your, the entrance of your word brings light. So every time the word of God is preached, there has to be light. You have to see things totally different. Amen. So we're going, what translation is this? Is this King James? Ah, okay. King James is good. But can, we, can you go, do, do, you have, uh, do you have CSB? It's very close to King James. Do you have CSP? Okay, let's go to CSP. Okay, let's stand for the reading of the word. I'm going to try to read it. You know, pastors, they're amazing. If they don't know how to sing, they always sing. You know, like that. <laughs> Even when they don't know how to read, they want to read it for themselves sometimes. Please forgive us. That's the way we are. God has called you to love us with all our mistakes as he has called us to do the same to you. You see, okay, so this is verse one. Then Paul says, okay, we want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that is given to the churches of Macedonia. You will understand that what type of grace is given to Macedonia churches, right? During a severe trial brought about by affliction, their abundant joy, their extreme poverty overflowed in, in a world of generosity of their part. So he's explaining now the grace that was given to the Macedonia, right? It's, a, it's generosity, generosity, okay? During, during a severe, okay, sorry. I can testify that according to their ability, even beyond their ability of their own accord, of their own accord, they begged us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in the ministry to the saints. And not just as we had hoped. Instead, they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to us by God's will. So we urged Titus that he just, uh, okay, that just as he had begun so he should also complete among you this act of grace. So Titus is the minister of this grace, okay? Continue. All right. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, speech, knowledge, in all diligence, and in all love for us, excel also in this act of grace. What is that act of grace? Giving. If you go to NIV, okay, we're going to go. Please mark this one, the verse 7, we're going to go to NIV, right? Continue. I am not saying this as a command. In other words, I'm not commanding you. Rather, by means of diligence of others, I am testing the genuineness of your love. It is in giving where we are tested, okay? For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I am not giving advice, okay? In this matter, I'm giving advice. I can not command you, but I'm giving advice. It is profit. It is profitable for you. And who began last, okay, and who began last year not only to do something, but also to want to do it. So which means they are changing a bit. Now, also finish the task 
so that just as there, there was an eager desire, can you believe the Corinthians now have an eager desire? Eager desire, there may also be a completion according to what you have. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what the person has, not according to what he does not have. It is not that there should be, there should be relief for others and hardship for you, but it is a question of equality. And the present, at the present time, your surplus is available for their need so that they are so that their abundance may in turn meet your need in order that there may be equality. It is, okay, as it is written, the person who had much did not have too much and the person who had little did not have too little. Thanks be to God who put the same concern for you into the heart of of Titus. Titus was a giving, was a was a, a offering collector. For he welcomed our appeal and being very diligent went out to you by his own choice. We have sent with him the brother who is praised among all the churches for his gospel ministry. I think that one, I think let's end it there. Uh, yes, okay, Let, let's end it there uh, because I think I've passed from what I wanted to say. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise and we give you the glory and we give you the honor for there's no one like you. In Jesus' name, amen. So what you will notice here, uh, I know we have uh, uh, been dealing with the book of Corinthians and the stinginess of Corinth and, and the pride of the people of Corinth and the way Paul is trying to convince them and the way Paul told them that, guys, I was with you, but it was Macedonia that, 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 uh, that, uh, that supported me. You know, you did not see to my needs. I was hungry in your presence and things like that. And it says, because of the unreadiness of your heart, I will never be a burden to you. And I've resolved I'll never be a burden to you. Then he encourages them that says, if uh, you have to excel also in other things. He says, you have excelled in knowledge. You have excelled in uh, in, uh, 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 you know, different things, but it says that I want you also to excel in this grace, which is the grace of giving, okay? He says the grace was given to the Macedonian church, okay? The grace for giving. What is the grace of giving? The grace of giving is when God opens your heart so that you can have a flow of material things or or, 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 or money or whatever that you need to give to the Lord at that time. And the way to give into the Lord, you can see, is two things. When you study the book of Corinthians, you'll see that the way to give to, to, the, to, the, to, to the Lord is, 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 is it's three things. It's three things you have to understand. It is giving, it is, it is, it is giving to the house of, of the Lord for the needs of the Lord, for the needs of God's house. It's also giving in the house of God for the needs of God's servants that are working in the house. And also it's giving to other believers who are in need, your fellow believers that are around. Are you getting that? So that is the way of giving to the Lord. Where Paul says that if we give to people, we have to start with those who are in the house of God. In other words, it won't help for you to say, I have this... Uh, this organization, I have this, we are helping people, blah, blah, but you have people in your church who are having the same need and we are neglecting them and going to people you don't know. So Paul says that we have to start with the people that are in the house of the Lord. So that is order. Okay? So Paul says to them, uh, there is a grace that is given to the, uh, to the church uh, uh, in, in, in Macedonia. And it says that uh, he's challenging them that I want this grace also to overflow with you. And this grace, excel also in this grace. Go to, uh, go to verse 7 in NIV. Go to verse 7 in NIV. He says, I want you also to, uh, to, 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 to excel in this grace. Paul is trying to tell us that you can excel in many things. You can excel in education. You can excel in knowledge. You can excel in gifting. You can excel in, uh, in, in whatever area where you excel. 
but you can come to the point where you excel in everything but not in giving. Are you hearing this? That we excel, in, we can excel in everything and be stuck in giving. You can be the nicest person on earth. Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> and I say, sister, so and so is very merciful, very good, and, but, but stingy. So Paul says, what I wish for you, he says, you love us. You know, you have, you have love for us. You have this and this and that. You have knowledge. You have all these things that you have. And it's, there's nothing wrong in having all these things you have. But you are running short of one thing. You need to excel in the grace of giving. So he even tells them that. He says to them, he says, Jesus gave to you guys. He became poor for your sake so that you can be rich. All right, are you getting that? So now, look at this. He says, he says, but since you excel in everything, you know, if he says you excel in everything, when it comes to education, you guys are okay. When it comes to money, you are okay. When it comes to, when it comes to, uh, 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 what, 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 status, you are okay. When it comes to business, you are okay because, you know, you, you, you excel. When it comes to dressing, you look good. You've got wonderful perfumes in, uh, or not perfume, let's say colognes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You've got wonderful things, but it says that, but, 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 but you, you are still poor. He says, since you excel in everything, in faith, in other words, you confess faith, and when you preach the word, it's so, wow, my God. In speech, you, 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 you have mastered the language, and you have knowledge. You are not just knowledgeless people. You've got knowledge, and uh, uh, it says, he, then he says, in complete uh, earnestness, you know, and he says that, in other words, uh, the people of Corinth, what, what you see is what you get. So if they're not going to give to you, they're not going to give to you. That's all right. If they don't like Paul, they're not going to give to him and these things like that. Okay. Then in the love, okay, which means these people have love as well, okay. Uh, I'm not sure if they had love or he was trying to massage them, but it's okay. It's all right, Paul. It's okay. We ha okay, we have, okay. oh, the love. Okay, they did not have love. Paul had to candle it. Did you see here? In the love we have candled in you. Because why was I worried when he said love? Because love, okay, listen to this. We can give without love, but we cannot love without giving. Are you hearing this? So when I read it, I was puzzled when he says they have love. I said, no, Paul, I'm worried now. You say they have love, but I'm just worried because how can you have love and not give? It's impossible. It's impossible. You can't have love and not give. Because God so loved the world. And because he loved, then the second, he had no choice. He so loved, then he gave. Are you hearing this? In other words, if God chose to love, now giving is not a choice when you love. Is it clear to you? When you love, giving is not a choice. Go to the people who are about to get married. Gifts are flowing like, like water. It's very easy. You know, go to the people who are on honeymoon, you know. In honeymoon like that. You know, here's the shoe, baby. You like it? <laughs> oh, don't worry, baby. <laughs> you see, because when love flows, giving flows. Every time you have a problem with giving, don't, you don't have a problem of giving. You have a problem of loving. So the root problem is love, is not actual act of giving. Are you hearing this? As you see that in the Corinthian church, Paul had to work hard to candle the love in them. In the love we have candled in you. We had to work hard because Corinthians were not loving people. Yes, educated people. Yes, civilized people. Yes, 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 people who are connected. Yes, business people. Yes, intellectual people. But love was absent. So Paul had to candle it. And, and, and for you to see that Paul had to kindle the love, he also speaks 
that, uh, 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 my God, he also speaks to them, he says, for where there is desire, there will be a gift. Where there is willingness, there will be a gift. In other words, he's now recognizing their willingness. Okay? Then he says to them, we have sent Titus. We have sent Titus so that because Titus was going around the churches and he was in charge of collecting offering and all of those things. He says, as he has done in Macedonia, now Titus is coming to you to do this kind of ministry. So be ready for brother Titus and all of those things. Are you hearing this now? He says, where there is willingness, he says, then the gift will flow. Where there's willingness, the gift, but willingness must flow from love. Because love makes your heart willing. Makes your heart willing. It is the love that softens your heart. It is the love that makes your, love, your, your heart tender. It is, your, it, it, is, it is your love that directs you. That's why Jesus Christ, when he spoke to, to the people of his time, he says, wherever your treasure is, he says, so, you know, you know, you know wherever your heart is, what, wherever what? He says, also, your heart will do what? Your heart will follow. Wherever your treasure is, your heart will, what is treasure? Treasure is love. It's what we love. What we treasure is what we love. In other words, wherever your love is leading you, your heart will also follow. Your heart has no choice. Your heart will follow. So we see that now the people of Corinth are softening up. Their heart is a bit tender. They are no more questioning Paul's authority. Because if you check, he would say to all those of you who are questioning my authority. So now they are now softening, softening, softening a bit when it comes to giving. If you have a problem with giving, I'm yet to tell you that your heart can soften. Open yourself to God. Open yourself to God's word. Look at the sacrifice of Jesus who became poor so that you can be rich. Look at the exchange. Look at the treasures that Jesus died to give you. Look at the forgiveness of sin. Look at the holiness he came to give you. Look at the redemption. Look at the, you know, look at the Holy Spirit he gave you. So now, if you recognize all those gifts, you cannot help but to be grateful. And when you are grateful, giving becomes, becomes more easier. So are you hearing that? Now, I want you to notice something before we kind of like go further. That Paul says to them, you had a desire and an eagerness and you did not just want, you did not just, uh, you, you, you wanted to do something. You remember that verse? Okay, a uh, Bible uh, person who can help me with these verses. Uh, he says you wanted to do something, but he says that you must bring completion to it. In other words, they came to the point where they promised. They pledged. They did pledges. And Titus is here to collect pledges. They did pledges, but they did not fulfill the pledges. Now he's begging them to fulfill there's nothing new in the church. I wonder if you fulfilled all your pledges. Or you just came forward when we ask. But did you fulfill your pledges? Hey, check that verse. That they speak about completion, you know. You see, so, you see, the Corinthians now, they came to the point where there was, their hearts were softened. But because they, they, their hearts... They have not grown like the Macedonian church and the Philippian church. They have not grown in giving. So they, they, they have a desire, but they are struggling. Have you, ever, have you ever been challenged by God in a certain area and you have a desire, but you don't have guts to do? You don't have guts to do? You know that you should do? But you don't have guts to do. You don't feel that, you know, you, 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 you are kind of like reluctant. You love it. You want to do it. You know it's God's will, but kind of like reluctant. So this is where they are. Then Paul is begging them that, guys, prepare your heart before 
before the minister of offering, Titus comes. Because when he comes, he's going to call for offering. And I don't want you to embarrass me. Because I've been teaching you all along. I've been nailing this over you. Please, when my son comes, let us see the fruit of what the father has been laboring about in Corinth. Are you hearing that? You see? Oh, I thought there was a verse. Okay. Are you hearing this now? So he, he, he is saying that they must complete. Like, for example, let's say that we've got people who have desires in this house. But here's the issue. Complete. There are people who love giving, but who don't give. No. There are people who believe in giving. Don't ever think that stingy people don't believe in, in giving. No, they believe. It's a different thing to believe and it's a different thing to do. Are you hearing this now? Yeah, it's, it's not an issue of believing. It's an issue of willingness because there could be a separation or a separator between willingness and fulfilling. In between. There could be reluctancy. In between. I really want to but I don't come to the point where I perform what I believe. And I may be misunderstood that I don't believe. There are many believe, people who believe in tithe, but they don't tithe. It is not the issue of believing. I, I'm not sure, are you hearing what I'm trying to say to me? It's like, it's like, it's like when you deal with the children of God who have made mistakes, who have fallen to sin and things like that. It's not the issue they don't believe in Jesus. It's not like that. You know, and some other people would say they come again, born again, receive Jesus again. It's a waste of time. It's not the issue of faith. It is not an issue of faith. Okay? So can you see that? He says, now finish the work. Somebody say finish. He says, now finish the work so that your eager willingness to do, it may be meshed by your completion. In other words, you've got willingness, but completion is more important. Is important. Because this thing of wishing and, oh my God, we wish we could build the church. Oh God, we wish, we wish, we wish, we wish. He says, now, no, don't stay on wishes. How many people are wishing in this house? You just wish and wish and wish. You, you just wish. You know, it's like people say that if I can have this money, I will give to the house of God. No, start budgeting on that if you are serious. You start budgeting on that. Wishes, wishes, if wishes were horses, they don't become horses. You have to do something about it. All right? So then it says, match up with, 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 by your completion of it according to your means. I like this. He says, you give according to your means. You don't kill yourself. But what if your means are taken away by the worldly things? What if, what if you're a professional but you give like a domestic worker? Because your means have been robbed. Are, are you hearing that? He says, everybody must give according to what he was. According to the means. Now, if the Bible speaks about means, it does not speak about what you have left. It speaks about ability. A professional nurse does not have the same means and ability, you know, uh, 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 same way as uh, the doctor. Are you hearing this? It's not the same, not the same ability. It's the same act of grace. It's the same act of giving. But I'm here to say to you that if you're in the house of God, you must watch all the time that the world will not consume your means to the point that you have nothing to give to the house of God. Or what you give does not represent your level. Oh, you don't like me now. So... Uh, I'm going, to, I'm going to close this thing today because you don't, you're not going to like me today. I can see. 
Are you hearing me? I'm saying this life, this life can consume your means. And when you go to the house of God, you have leftovers. You give God leftovers. So God gave to you. God gave you the job. God gave you the salary. God gave you the strength. God gave you the mind. God gave you the degree. God gave you the PhD. God gave you the masters. God gave you the, the skill. God gave you the training. God gave you, you know, God gave you money. Gave you everything. But the, 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 the desires of this world. I wish I could talk to you now. Can we speak a bit about the desires of this world? Your desire to have a microwave. It's like you're going to die if you don't have a microwave. Your desire to have that car, even when your pocket is straining, but you still want to pay for that car instead of paying for this car. Because if you paid for this car, then you would have your means represented in the house of God. But now you have nothing to show because the cares of this world have taken your means. You're not going to like me today. Let me. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll, fish, I'll preach sitting on the floor and you don't see. I'll hide by this hito, hito, this hito, this hito. <laughs> so, so the first thing that Satan will do is that he will target your ability to give. I, I saw something very wonderful uh, that says, it's a writing. It says, when God, uh, 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 what, what? Uh, when God, when God shifts, you, we shifts your life to another level. Uh, it, it says that when God shifts your level, your level of life, do not raise up your standard of living, but raise up your giving, your level of giving. That's a kingdom mind. No, no, no. If you love things, you will not understand this. Ah, no, 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 no. Ah, if you're worried about what you dress at church, you know, I, I can't repeat this, I dressed it last time, and what, what, and other, fleshly, that's flesh, that's flesh, it's flesh. No, it sounds good, no, it sounds good. We can even feel for you, but it's never spiritual at all. That's it. So it happens, it happens that all the accounts, all the bills, all the image you try to create, all the impression, you impress us, you look good, but that's why it ends. It has no eternal glory. It does not glorify God. No matter how beautiful you are, no matter how expensive you dress, but it does not glorify God. Yeah, and even we even forget what you dressed last week because it made you feel good, but it never achieved the divine purpose for your life. So if you're a student, you learn now. If you get a job, you budget on God. You get a job, you budget on God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And you see, you see, all of these things you want. Yeah. I know you've been looking for a job for a long time, but when the job came, you, you attended to flesh first. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We can see by your dressing now that the level has shifted. But when we check the treasure in the house of God, you are not represented. But we can see it on you. God has blessed you to spend it on you. That is up to you. We can see when we enter your house. Yeah, when we enter your flat, we can see. We can see that. No, no, no. You don't just have this an ordinary microwave. Your microwave, your microwave is not like other microwaves. Your microwaves, when it's on, it brings a song. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 a, it's a very... Are you hearing me? Your microwave is not normal. Your microwave has a... Has a, a, a micro, you don't even next, need, you need to come next to it. It's got a remote control. Your microwave. See? You're good. You are a person of standard and a person of class. But your class is not known in the house of God. When we check the books, you are nowhere to be found. I don't know what came, I don't know what came on me today. Please, if, if you invited somebody, tell them he preached well last week. I don't know what happened to him today. 
I, I don't know what happened to him. Please just apologize on my behalf and say, no, 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 my pastor is a very good man. Uh, he encouraged us last week. I don't know what happened to him today. Uh, I guess he's human too. And, and me, myself, I don't know what's happening to me, but uh, I think I'm going to flow with what I'm feeling right now. Because God wants to deliver some people in this house. Because God wants to be a kingdom person. He wants you to be kingdom minded. Uh, uh, because God wants you to be close to his heart. He wants you to be in his house. And see God and honor God. And have your representation. You see, you see, you see. Sit down, you see. Let me tell you. Um, can I tell you something? Do you know that you can't cheat giving? You know, you can't cheat giving. Mm -mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mala Book of Malachi. If you go there, <laughs> hey. you see the book of Malachi? God is complaining. He said, these people, he says, they don't honor me. He says, they give to me disabled offerings, animal sheep. They Give to me thin, skinny sheep. Do you know you can't give without your heart being revealed? If you give a gift to me, I can tell what you think about me. I'm not sure you understand, frankly. No, no, to you as well. If I give you a gift, you will see if I was just doing it. But if I have done it, because, do you know, before you give what you do, you do not check. Listen, you do not check what you want to give. You check the level of the person you give to. You don't give to God just from your heart only. But you check God and check what you have. If it moves your heart, then it will move the heart of God. I'm not sure you get me. Are, are, you, are you really getting me? You can't give and hide your heart. It's impossible. Touch your neighbor and say, let your heart be revealed. Yeah, let your heart be revealed. There are two, the, listen, there are two ways when you give. If you come here and you come here with 10 rand. I know, in churches where they dance when they give. So, what happens this, as a person gives, listen, this is a professional, and she comes, or he comes, and he gives 10 rand. 10 rand tells a story. Can I talk about what, what 10 rand is telling me? Can I Google? <laughs> listen, 10 rand speaks, first thing it speaks is this this person may be in financial trouble because looking at her, the level, looking at the profession, when we look at your profession, we already, we can gauge you. Your profession is a measuring stick. We can measure it. If you say you're a police, we know exactly. Yeah. Depending on your... We know already uh, how much you should be making. If you say you're a doctor, we say, okay, if you say you are, you know, you know, you get that, you get that. So now, is this person probably is in a financial problem, right? It's full of debt or something, whatever that may be, as he gives 10 rand. Or this person is not just in debt, but this person does not value the house of God. He will rather give better at the restaurant other than sacrificing to give in the house of God. So it tells your mentality how do you look at the house of God. Now, it means now, if I'm a profession, if I work, whatever kind of work, if I do budget, I should also include God. 
Paul says to the church, I want you to prepare in time so that when I come, it's not time for collection, I just take. You prepare in time. You put it aside in time. I'm asking, where is God in your expenses? Do, do, do you have God there? Do, 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 do you have God? Do, 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 do you have him? Okay, no, you look bad now. Let me change the message. <laughs> You see? So we give according to the means, all right? So in other words, I have to honor the means that God has given to me. Now, look at this. Then Paul says, um, you know, he says, for if there's eagerness, or if, e or if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable. If the eagerness is there, gift is acceptable. According to what a person has not according to what he does not have so we give the giving now becomes um the giving now becomes joyful because when you give god does not want you to strain not that he cannot strain you from time to time if he wants to push you to another level he can tell you straight to give Sometimes he can say, give all. Sometimes he can say, that microwave with a remote. God's, God may say that I want it. So are you hearing that? So, Paul is trying to convince them. He says to them, it is profitable for you. He says, it's profitable for you. It is, I'm saying this because it's profitable for you. It is for your benefit. Giving does not make you lose. It does not make you lose. That's what the flesh thinks. It does not make you. There's no losing in giving. Then it says to them, we've read this one. Now finish the task. So that just there is, there was eager and the desire, right? Um, there may be also a completion that you finish, right? Then it says, if not, that there should be relief for others. He says, you guys have plenty. He says, your surplus is a blessing to other churches. In other words, you can give and still have something left. But it says, but they've given out of their poverty. To whom much is given, much is. Then, then this is what I, the, the, when I was reading the scripture, what touched me is this. He said, I, this is not a command. I am not commanding you. Get to that verse, please. I'm not doing what? Ladies and gentlemen, no man of God can command you to give. I'm not commanding you. You can't give out of command from a human being. God can command you. The Holy Spirit can command you. But no human being can. You cannot command people to give. If you do, it's manipulation. People should not be pressured to give. They should not feel compelled. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say it here? You should not feel compelled. There's no command. There's no command. Even when it comes to tithing as we believe in tithing as a church, we don't tithe as a command. We don't tithe as a law. If you have been afraid, oh my God, if I don't, if I don't tithe, yeah, there are consequences of not giving. If I, if I don't tithe, no, I'm going to be cursed. No, we do not tell you that. We don't preach that here. Okay? 
so, so, but it has to be, it has to be a flow. It has to, it to be a flow of love. He even says to them, I advise. We can only advise you. Because giving has something to do with the heart. You cannot control people's heart. There has to be a heart to it. I don't command you. We cannot command you to give. We should not make you feel scared. We should not say that God is going to beat you. God is going to cast you. God is going to do this and things like that. We should not use words of manipulation in order for you to be a faithful giver. When you are a faithful giver, it should be from your heart. From the revelation of who Christ is. From the revelation of who the man of God is. From the revelation of what the house of God is. For the revelation of what the kingdom of God is. And that giving should flow from that revelation. You should not... Are you hearing this? You should not give because you want to be in the good books of the bishop. You should not give because you, do, you, you understand that. Because other people are going to give and what should I do and things like that. You should not. It should flow from your heart. Giving is worship. Giving is worship. We give God out of our hearts. Our soul, out of, out of the fiber of our beings. It is gratefulness. It is saying, I thank you that you have kept me. I thank you that you have protected me. I thank you that I'm still alive. I should have died long time ago. I thank you that I've been in the hospital, but I'm out of the hospital. I thank you that I'm not yet well, but I'm still alive. It is an act of grace and act of gratefulness. People who are grateful are givers. People who recognize the grace of God upon their lives are givers. You cannot be gracious and understand God's grace and be stingy it does not connect it's not a commandment to give it's a principle it is not a commandment it's a principle a principle is something that you do or you don't do it You do or you don't do it. It's a principle. But it cannot be commanded. I will hate to have people who give for wrong reasons. I'd rather have you stop giving. I'd rather have you stop giving. If, if your giving is either then the love of Jesus is either then the revelation of Jesus, is either then for, is, is, it does not come from a grateful heart. If giving is a burden to you, stop it. Oh, let me say it again. If giving to you is a, is a, is a burden, stop it. Stop it. Paul says where there's eagerness, he says the gift is acceptable. So if you give out of strife, then it is not a blessing. It is only a blessing from the source of the heart. If the heart is happy, if the heart is worshiping, if the heart is praising, if the heart is grateful, if the heart is recognizing that God, God's grace, then give. Then give. Touch your neighbor and say, let your heart flow. Say, let your heart flow. Let's say, in giving, let your heart flow. Just open your heart. The gift will flow. The gift will flow. The gift will be acceptable. Are you hearing this now? Amen. Just let it go. It's the issue of the heart. It's not the issue of needs. It's not the issue of debts. It's the issue of the heart. When there's eagerness, when there's willingness, the gift is acceptable. Are you hearing this? Then it says that I'm not saying this as a command, rather by means of diligence of others. I am testing the genuineness of your love. Now, can you see now? Somebody say giving is a test. Of love. Yes, 
If you don't give, please stop when you pray, Lord, I love you. Stop. It's too much now. Too much now. Too, it, it, it's boring. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> It's like Minister William saying to the twins, I love you boys, I love you boys, I love And then when they come and they need uh, uh, some, some things for school, and then he's ducking and, you know, he's, you know, are you hearing that? Now that does not make sense. Love is action. I love you, Lord. Yeah, that's okay. We have heard it. We, are, we want to see it. We want to see it. Serious. We want to see it. Oh, I love the Lord. I love Jesus. Okay, we've heard you. If you repeat it again and again and again, then um, um, we know that you are, you are a poet. <laughs> you see that? Uh, we know that you are what? A poet, yeah. We, we just know. No, no, you are not a lover of Jesus. You know, like telling, telling your family that you love them, telling your family, I love you, I love you, I love you, and then no, no groceries. They sleep hungry, but you are busy. Oh, I love you all, I love you. Does it make sense? So saying that we love God with no representation of what we say in the house of God, God is not yet persuaded that we love him. Are you getting that? It's not yet what? It's like, it's like, it's like many women who don't understand this. You know, my husband, I respect you. It means nothing to a man. Remember, we don't we don't blush. Are you hearing that? In fact, when you say you respect me, you find a man I'll be scratching my head to say. Then you get the word, I hear you. No, there's no man that says, thank you, thank you. <laughs> that you respect me. We don't thank people for saying they respect us. Yeah, 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 yeah. We thank them when we see the respect. Right. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so stop saying to a, to a husband, you respect. Just do the respect. You'll see him one day coming with the, what, what do you love? Some of you love fat cook with polonium. <laughs> love, love, love fat, fat cook with polonium. He'll come here with a big fat cook like this <laughs> to say, my wife, I thank you <laughs> for the respect you have for me. See? This is what I want you to get. Love, love, love. Love cannot be legislated. Love cannot be legislated. Love cannot be pushed. Love does not manipulate. Love does not make you guilty. But love is conviction. Love affects your behavior. Affects your action. It can only be confirmed by action. 
not by feeling. Feeling is not love, it's part of. Like the sea has waves. Sea has what? Waves. Waves are not sea, but they are part of sea. Waves come and go, but sea remains. Waves are situational. So from today, I want you to, 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 to resolve in your heart that you will lay your heart before God when it comes to giving. Lay it on the table, whatever table you have. Lay it at the altar and say, God, help me to excel in this grace as I've excelled in other places as well. I want you to help me that in this grace I will also excel. And the other thing is this that I wanted to encourage you to do. You know, you see today, I'm just speaking about giving generally. I wanted to speak about service of God, but I think I've left that. It's okay. That's okay now. Enough. <laughs> Enough with that. <laughs> You preach, you preach, you preach to the believers, you preach, you preach in their heart. They say, enough, we've heard you. <laughs> enough. <laughs> I, remember, I remember one day we were praying. We were, pray, we were praying with my wife and, and Tasso was still young. Tasso was still young. And we were praying and praying. And we were praying, you know, you know, you know women. <laughs> when they pray. No, it's good. It's appreciation. Don't worry. <laughs> I prayed and I finished. Yeah. <laughs> and mommy was, Lord, Lord, yeah, yeah Lord. <laughs> then I had Tassio, very young. Amen. <laughs> so, and then she continued. Maybe she thought this child is spiritual. <laughs> then he repeated, Amen. Then the amen had stretches. Amen. In other words, stop it now. I want to go play. <laughs> so in the church, it's, it's not same amens. You'll never know. Some other people, they say, stop it. And some, they say, stop it. I like it. Stop, I like it. Stop it. So. We are a giving church. Amen. Giving. Giving with us flows. 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 If it does not flow, it speaks of spiritual sickness that has to be attended to. Anytime you have something that goes I've checked in my life if God, I was giving yesterday, some, yesterday God said they withdraw, give to another believer God said withdraw the money in this much and give to so and so, I did yesterday but the, 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 the best way the best way to give no, 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 no not that one, that's another one not, not what you're talking about yeah some politics. Okay. Now. <laughs> now. What I have recognized is this. You know, when you think about giving, then there's something in your heart that goes, grr, grr. it's a confirmation that you have to give. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a confirmation that you have to give. Because it is that that God wants to break. It happens with different figures. The most God stretches you. If you, if, you have, if you have not been to that level, there will be something that goes, and you know, I need to break that thing. That thing is keeping me under while God wants to take me higher. I decree in the name of Jesus 
that through giving, God will take you higher. That God will stretch you wide. God will stretch your giving in a way that giving will become a ministry. You know, Paul calls it what? He calls it the act of grace. Then he calls it ministry. That it is the ministry. When we give, we minister to God. You may be not a preacher like me, but can I tell you something? You've got a privilege to preach to God through your giving. Because your heart is seen in your giving. Worshippers, come. I'm not sure if I finished the verses. I'll look at them at home and see which one is left. Yeah. Yeah. When you're standing before people, sometimes you don't see verses right. So, so, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. I want you to, every time, see a privilege when it's time to give. See a privilege. Don't allow giving to bring sadness into your heart if it's time to give. Or make sure that there are no negative feelings. Because it is the heart that God blesses. You know, when the widow gave at the temple, Jesus Christ was at the temple, and the widow gave. And the Bible says others gave out of their surplus. Right? But she gave out of what she was going to live on at that time. Then Jesus says she is the biggest giver. How come? She gave little. But you don't know how much her heart was stretched. So God blesses the stretching of the heart. He blesses. He blesses the sacrifice of the heart. Other guys were not called. They did not get the blessing. They did not get the blessing that this woman got. Though they had big monies. The heart. When you give, don't withdraw your heart. Let it flow from your heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What a powerful word that was. I trust you were blessed as I was. To all our members who would like to send their tithes and offering, feel free to do so on the details stated on the screen. Also, to our fellow saints that would like to contribute to the work of the kingdom, you can do so on the details stated on the screen. Reach out to us for all your spiritual needs. The contact details are stated on the screen. We'll see you next week, same time, same place. Stay blessed.